We are very privileged today to have with us a guest with an amazing background. After I read this, you're going to think that this guy's about 85 years old, considering all that he's accomplished. And trust me, he's no way near that. He achieved a law degree from Harvard Law. He's been called the Prince of Wall Street for his market savviness and entrepreneurial success. He's founded a very successful, the, the very successful Skybridge Capital, and has authored several books. He's in the midst of a book now that I can't wait for to come out. It's called Blue Collar President. Guess what it's about? Yeah. <laughs> and it's all good. It's all clean. They're best friends, so it's, uh, it's going to be interesting. He's made many guest appearances on Fox. Fox News, Fox Business, he was named Assistant to President Trump and appointed the Communications Director. It is my honor and my privilege to introduce to you a dear friend and a Michael Grimm supporter, Anthony Scaramucci. Neither one of my parents went to college, and so when I got into Harvard, my mother thought it was Hartford. <laughs> so when I got in the car, and she says, we're, we're going to Harvard? I said, no, but we're going to Harvard. She said, yeah, but isn't it in Harvard? It's in Harvard, Connecticut. And so I had to explain to them it was in Boston. But it is such a great honor to be here. Um, you know, when you grow up in an Italian immigrant family, um, we, we spread ourselves some here in Staten Island. Uh, my, my grandparents moved out to Long Island because on Long Island, there was the uh, one of the largest crushed aggregate sand pits in North America. And so not to give you guys a geology lesson, but when the glacial receded, uh, it left Long Island, Block Island, the elbow of Cape Cod, Martha's Vineyard, and Nantucket. And in the peninsula of Port Washington, uh, there was this very large sand mine that Italian, Welsh, and Irish immigrants mined for 95 years. And so my dad uh, uh, grew up in northeastern Pennsylvania in a coal mining town, came out here after high school, and spent 42 years mining that sand uh, to give me the life and give me, frankly, the opportunity that I had in my life. And so uh, that's one of the reasons why I'm here, because when I look at Michael's life, and I think about the stories of his dad, the hard work that his dad persevered through, uh, and then how Michael pulled himself through the Marine Corps, was an undercover FBI agent, got himself a law degree, uh, and then went to the Congress uh, to serve all of you great people here in Staten Island. Uh, it makes me really think about the fight, the fight that we all have for working class families, middle class families, how are we gonna make America better, how are we gonna make America greater, uh, and how are we going to make sure that our society is safe for our children, um, our society is prosperous for both them and our grandchildren. And so uh, for me, um, I'm just so delighted to be here to talk about Michael. Um, I met Michael first time in 2010 when he was running. I uh, had no idea who he was. I was with a group of hedge fund managers. Michael came to speak to us, and uh, we looked around at each other and said, okay, this guy's got the fight in him. This guy's a guy that's gonna go to Washington uh, and do the right things. Now, unfortunately, I only spent 11 days in Washington. Now, let me tell you something. Like that. My, you know, some people say 10 days, it hurts my feelings, right? So, I, say 10 days. so I, I sometimes have to go back. I should go back. I'm trying to stay married, okay? I don't but, you know, when, you, when, you think about, when you think about my experience, you know, I sometimes have to say it's 954,000 seconds because it makes me feel good. But what you learn about Washington, it's a super tough place. Uh, and it's a ruthless place, you know. I, I said to a group of college kids, it was like, if you took the uh, Game of Thrones screenwriters and you, you married them to the Hunger Games screenwriters and then you brought in the House of Cards, and then you know it's a little bit of a comedy, so you gotta bring the beef guys in too. If you put all those guys together, then they can write the screenplay in Washington. And so it's a little ruthless, it's a little mean, and unfortunately, and this is the sad truth about it, uh, they care more about themselves than they do the American people. You know, they're sitting there feathering in their own bed. You know it's true, that's why I'm writing this. We started getting fed up with this. There was, a, there was a, a, a switch that flipped in the American society where they said, wait a minute, this doesn't just seem right. Okay, these guys are feathering their own bed. 
the five suburbs around Washington are the fastest growing, they're the most economically stable, and the rest of us are out here uh, working super hard, taking on a lot of risk. Uh, half the money or 40% of the money is going to Washington, and what are they actually doing with the money? And so uh, in 2010, when I was sitting there with my friends looking at Michael, I said, this guy is a foxhole sort of person. This is a combat-tested veteran. This is a guy that's gonna sit with you and think about you and think about your best interest. He did it in Hurricane Sandy. He did it uh, as it related to Fort Hamilton. He did it as it related to going home to home during those floods. Uh, this is a guy uh, that has a heart of gold uh, and a backbone of steel. And so I am just so super delighted to be here and give the opportunity to endorse him uh, and to tell you that you got to get him back into Congress, and we need more people like him. It's not just because I know he's going to vote alongside of the president. A lot of these Republicans, as you know, oh, they post stuff like they're going to help the president, and then they vote against the president. They vote against them with Obamacare. They vote against them as it relates to the tax cut. They vote against them as it relates to so many different issues. Uh, and then you look at them and say, geez, are they even Republicans? Uh, but we know Michael is going to vote with, he's going to team up with, he's going to side with the president. But more important than that, for somebody like me, Michael is the type of person uh, that can gravitate to others. Michael is the type of person that can get in that beehive and start to convince other people how important it is that we stay on the same team and we prosecute the president's agenda. Question from the Russian media. What do you think about the Kremlin propaganda? Is the Congress doing I'm allowed to get that close to you, though. It's take two steps back because you're from the Russian media. <laughs> what was the question? No, I'm what sorry. do you think? The, uh, the Congress doing enough to stop the Kremlin propaganda in the United States? Um, well, they could always do more. I mean, at the end of the day, they could always do more. That's it. Thank you. I was just teasing. I love the Russians. Take care, man. You're good.